Barry, when you reflect on the year, I mean, going back to this time last year, did, did you ever expect that this would happen for you in 2019? Um, no, not hope, no. So if someone told me last year that the year was going to end like this, I would have told you were mad. But uh, no, it was a, a great year now, and it was kind of a dream come true. So it's unbelievable year. And what changed for you in the middle of the year? Because, you know, you started against uh, Clare down at Cusick Park. Other than that, then, you probably had to wait for your real chance until much later in the Championship, the All-Ireland semi-final. Yeah, um, I suppose the lads were just flying at playing. Um, they had a really strong um, round robin in the Munster Championship. And I suppose the Munster final didn't go to plan. Um, and Liam probably had to reshuffle the pack a bit. But um, then I was lucky enough to get a start in the Wexford game. And that, that went OK. And... And thankfully, the All Ireland final went okay as well. So. And did it, did Liam say anything to you before he decided to throw you in in that Wexford game? Like, or what was his encouragement to you all year? Yeah, no, Liam was very supportive all year. Now, um, he just kept saying, you know, stay going um, and stay being patient. That um, everybody will be needed um, throughout this championship. And I suppose, as personal Liam's experience, you have to listen to him, and uh, that's what he did. And he just said a week before the Wexford game that um, we're thinking about playing you next week. And um, you know, and then I, I was lucky enough to get the nod then, and um, it went okay then after that. What were the nerves like going out for that game at Croke Park? Yeah, um, I suppose it was different. Um, so as people have often talked about the noise levels in there, and I didn't really kind of pay much heed to it. But then when you actually run out, it's nearly electric. But um, no, it was great. I suppose the longer the game went on, the more you kind of didn't want it in because um, how much you're enjoying it. But um, no, it was an unbelievable experience now. And to be put out then, man, Mark and Leach in as well. I know you probably weren't for the entire game, but yeah. uh, that's that's a fair old task. Yeah, which I know. Yeah, um, he's a he's a big man now, so he's hard enough to deal with. But uh, no, sure, it, it was great. Now um, I suppose you do all the training um, kind of in the winter months for challenges later on in the summer. So um, it was a great opportunity to get to, to Merkham. And what about in terms of even trying to nail down a position? A couple of years ago, you were, I think, centre forward for the under 21s. Yeah. You played wing back, full back. I mean, was it a case of even just trying to find a role or not be just considered a versatile player who'll fit in when people are missing? Yeah, no, exactly. Um, I suppose sometimes you can kind of. Versatility might play against you that you're, you have no real set position, but um, I suppose the other side of it is that it doesn't matter where you're on the field, that I suppose. The fundamentals say the same, that you just have to go to the ball and that you just have to work hard. And I suppose that was kind of my mindset throughout the year, that it didn't matter where you were playing on the field, that you just had to kind of do your bit for the team. And now and again in, in Tipperary, you'd hear, oh, this lad, he like big man, but he doesn't have the dog in him, he doesn't have the yeah. cut in him. It's nice to prove people wrong on that front. Oh, yeah, definitely, I suppose. Um, that was something that I had to kind of develop on this year, that was probably use my physicality a bit more. And uh, I suppose it was something I worked on the whole year. And... Um, I suppose it was nice, nice to kind of put a silence to it a bit, like so. Because yeah. you would have heard that, like would people have said that? Yeah. To you? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It probably would have been uh, one of my biggest flaws, and I, I was aware of that as well. That probably is a bit pure um, in hurling, and I suppose it was probably something that I had to improve on if I wanted to play for Tipperary. Back to that Clare game, I think you were marking John Conlon that day, and you might have kept him scoreless from play. Like that must have been huge personally, and gave a huge amount of belief going forward that you could mark a guy like that. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. Um, I suppose to mark someone like um, John Conlon and to, uh, I suppose, uh, ho hold him for that long, um, it was a great achievement. But, um, you know, I think Paulie Maher was kind of very close to me the whole day, so um, it was great having him in front of me. It was a great picture as well, uh, yourself and Lee Sheedy after that game where he's kind of staring into your eyes, looks like he's giving you a lot of encouragement. Yeah, yeah which I suppose that would probably be Liam's... Uh, Greatest trait, you know, he'd give you an unbelievable amount of confidence in yourself, and um, I suppose um, that that probably is a very memorable picture for me because um, it's kind of just, I suppose it was just Liam kind of giving you confidence about the day and kind of going forward and to drive it on. For the guys who weren't around in 2010, like obviously this time last year, you would have been hearing from all the party mares, etc., that here Liam's coming in and this guy is the man, but. Yeah. Is there the extra belief now coming into 2020 now that you have a year under him? Yeah, um, I suppose we haven't really looked at 2020 yet, um, to be honest. But um, I suppose Liam is very well respected in Tipperary and, and uh, for everything he's done. So, um, no, definitely, I suppose, a man like Liam, you just have to listen to everything he says. And, uh, you know, I think everybody would do anything for Liam now. So. It was like a lot was made about the backroom team. He kind of got... 
the right people into the right positions. Was that something that you really bought into early on? Or? Yeah, I suppose you had um, Darren, Tommy and Eamon and uh, you had a very good uh, backroom team as well. You know, all of them have huge experience playing for Tipperary, so they have a lot of knowledge that they can share with um, everybody. The big moment in Tipperary's year was obviously that, that win against Wexford and that period where John had just been sent off, you were a couple of points down. Is that player-led, is that management-led? Because that's something we haven't seen, that doggedness, that, that never-give-up spirit from Tipperary. Yeah, um, yeah I, I suppose it's probably um, a bit of both, but um, I know um, in that game, especially when you went five, point, five points down, um, I remember Noel McGrath was like a man possessed running around the place, you know, he, he was unbelievable and even Ron Amara was unbelievable in the backs as well, so I suppose when it comes into the white lines, it's up to the players really to, to drive it on. And I suppose a big criticism also at Tipperary would have been their supposed lack of, of, uh, of a bench really, but the young lads came on, scored a few points, Jake Morris as well, like he, they've just been phenomenal in that semi-final final. Yeah, no, exactly, um, they came of age that day, you know, all those lads, they, I think they've all earned medals now at every age group, so you know, they're unbelievable hurlers and they're all excellent when they come. I think of the five lads that came on, I think maybe four of them got a point and uh, I think Alan Finn came on the back as well and they're, they're all excellent when they come on. You know how hard it is to, to break onto a Tipperary team, but for young lads like that who are just so full of confidence, they're mixing in with the likes of three All-Ireland winners and the likes of Brendan and Shamey and all them. So. Are, are they coming in and just running the show, or are they still learning from the from the older lads? Yeah, um, no, I, I suppose um, they can offer the older lads um, things, and the older lads can offer the younger lads things, and I suppose everybody's just helping each other. But um, no, especially the under 21s now, they're great. They're great lads, even their attitude and everything, and the way they apply themselves, and they're accredited themselves, and no wonder they've won what they've won. Like. Seamus Callan was, was named Hurler of the Year. What has he been like? We all know his, his traits on, on the field, but as a captain, as a leader, what has he been like? Yeah, no, he's been unbelievable. Um, I suppose, you know, off the field he was excellent, but I felt on the field as well he was just unbelievable. I think he got a goal in every game and he was just leading from the front all the time. And, you know, he, he was an unbelievable captain this year for us. Would he be the type to come up and have have come, pull you aside for a conversation, have chat, chat to the younger lads, or what way does that that dynamic work? Yeah, I know he would be. I suppose um, Seamus has kind of seen it all now at this stage, but um, I think he kind of leads by example as well. Kind of when he's training and off the field and even in big matches, you know. But um, that's probably his greatest trait that he's always leading by um, his actions. What has his, this whole time been like for you? You, uh, you brought the, the cup to the school the other day I saw and um, like it was just huge excitement. What is, is it a bit surreal? Is it hard to take in? Yeah, no, it is. Um, I suppose it probably hasn't really, hasn't, kind of hasn't hit home yet um, the last few months. Um, it's kind of been like very unrealistic. Um, I suppose this time last year, if someone was to say that this would happen, I, I would have said you're mad. But... Um, no, it's been great the last few weeks now and I suppose the next few weeks you can enjoy and then once January comes then you'll kind of be shoulder to the wheel again. As a team, have you had much time together to, to kind of sit down, reflect and enjoy it? I know you have your team holiday coming up, but uh, have you had any real opportunities just to be together and, and embrace it? Yeah, um, not really. I think lads kind of went back to their clubs and I suppose when you're back with your clubs, you're kind of, you're with your own teammates then and then the competitive nature comes out and everybody and everybody is trying to, for their club to be uh, on the top of the pile but um, no, I'm sure over the next few weeks when the medal presentations and uh, when the holidays and even next week in New York I suppose lads will have time to actually sit down and reflect on the year How frustrating has it been with the, the club to, you've been so close over so many years to not get across the line Yeah no it has been um, I suppose we've lost we've been three last six county finals and uh, this year we lost narrowly to Killian, you know, it's been very frustrating. But um you know, there's very good players in Nina at the moment and there's a very good core age group as well. I think um apart from a few other few lads, I think there's like ten lads under under twenty four, so um, it's just very important that everybody stays together and stays going like do you think it's a bit like, you know, there, there always seems to be potential in Nina, a bit like when Turles, they were trying for so long, they had a lot of misery before they actually finally broke through and then really kicked on. Do you feel like you just need that one breakthrough win? Yeah, no, definitely, I suppose, probably get the monkey off her back a bit. Um, if, if you got over one, uh, maybe it might open up. But, um, you know, it's, it's a very hard thing to win the Tipperary Championship. And 
I think it's just important that lads kind of stay together and stay working hard and I'm, I'm sure it will crack for us one day. Who would have been your hurling influences growing up? Would have been the likes of Michael Skippy Cleary in there and Nina or, or who? Yeah, no, it has, yeah, Skippy has been very good um, and even my uncle John, um, he was very good to, for the juvenile clubs when he was younger and I suppose I was lucky enough to grow up in a kind of hurling house and I suppose they're all very uh, helpful to me as well. Have improved a lot, like in the last 10 15 years, they've won a lot of minors in that. Yeah, I know they have been. I suppose it's a great club in Nina, but um, I suppose it's just important that lads kick on after minor, that they're not just good minor herders, that they develop into being good senior herders for Nina. You, you have been consistent without winning the county, like it's probably, it's probably hard to watch other teams winning when you've kind yeah. of been there, thereabouts. No, it has been, you know. Um, I, I suppose when I was growing up, that I suppose Nina weren't getting to that many county finals, but we seem to be getting there frequently enough when we there around the business end of the year. So again, that that's a great sign as well that a club is going forward, but it's just probably important to kick on a bit now as well.